Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Thomas of Woodstock and we get to hear from Thomas of Woodstock today in Act 4, Scene 2. So Act 4, Scene 1, we were hanging out with the king and his flatterers and they did the whole blank charter thing and split up the kingdom amongst the flatterers and they came up with a plan to go to Plashy disguised as actors and kidnap Thomas and then ship him off to France and they are also having the uncles arrested for treason. So those are things that we the audience know are happening. But of course Thomas doesn't know that. He's been living at Plashy and the only thing that he knows is that the king wanted him to come back to sort of alleviate some of the stress and potential mutinies that the blank charter thing might cause. But Thomas was like, no, I need to stay here with my people. So he has stayed at Plashy with his wife and all of that. So Act 4, Scene 2, we are at Plashy and we've got Thomas there. We've got his wife, the Duchess of Gloucester. We have Cheney. We have a few others. And they're all like, you know, she needs to, she needs to leave. The Duchess of Gloucester needs to leave because the Queen is sick and she needs to go be by the Queen's side. So let's get her ready to go. Let's get her ready to go. But the Duchess of Gloucester doesn't want to go because she had some terrible dreams that Thomas is going to be killed. So it's all of a sudden we're in Julius Caesar <laughs> is what I was thinking when I was reading this. But yeah, she's like, you know, I, I just have this really bad feeling that bad things are going to happen. And I, I, I had these dreams and I had a dream where there were wolves and there were sheep. And then you ended up being killed. And I just don't feel right leaving you right now. And Thomas says, oh, for my God, thou art foolish. I'll tell thee all thy dream. Thou knowest last night we had some private talk about the blanks, the country's taxed withal, where I compared the state as now it stands, meaning King Richard and his harmful flatterers, unto a savage herd of ravening wolves, the commons to a flock of silly sheep, who, whilst their slothful shepherd careless stood, those forest thieves broke in and sucked their blood. And this thy apprehension took so deep, the form was portrayed lively in thy sleep. Come, come, tis nothing. What, are her horses ready? So similar to Julius Caesar, this is him dismissing her dreams. He says, look, you heard, you heard me talking last night. And while I was talking about the king and those stupid, stupid flatterers of his, I compared them to a flock of wolves and I compared the people to a flock of sheep. And I talked through this whole metaphor thing where the wolves come in and kill all the sheep. And you're so nervous about everything right now that your mind just replayed the conversation that I had from last night in your dreams. That's all it was. It doesn't portend anything. It doesn't mean that I'm in danger. Everything's fine. And then he calls out, you know, where are her horses? Are her horses ready? And Cheney is helping get the horses ready. And they call back in the messenger who arrived to say that the queen was sick. And they're like, okay, where, where exactly is the queen? Where does she need to go? How fast does she need to get there? And the messenger is like, you know, this is where the queen is. And she's very, very sick. So you kind of need to get there quickly. But the Duchess of Gloucester still just isn't feeling right about leaving. She keeps pushing on Thomas. She's like, I don't feel good about this. Like, yes, I need to go to the Queen, but I don't feel good about leaving you. But he dismisses all of that. And as he's putting her on the horse, he says one line and then he puts her on the horse and, and she leaves. And he's going to have a monologue tomorrow that we will get to hear about his state of mind following this whole thing. So I'll see you then for that. Mwah.